Macy Lou here and today I'm going to be discussing seven fun ways to fill up a sketchbook. Now before I get started um, I do want to mention that I do have a Patreon page and I'm about to completely revamp it. I'm only going to have like three tiers and I'm going to have better rewards than I currently have right now so go ahead and uh, check out the link and maybe become a patron a little early so you don't miss out But I do plan to roll out the new rewards soon. So keep an eye out for that You want to know how to fill up a sketchbook, right? Now in this video it is called fun ways to fill up a sketchbook. So I think that you will enjoy this Okay, so the first thing is section it off so kind of decide you know, if you want to completely start from scratch, you've got a fresh new sketchbook and you are like, okay, what is the best way to fill this thing up? Well, one way that I think is a really great one is go ahead and section off what pages you want to be dedicated to what. For example, have a section for animals. Okay, so decide, okay, the first three pages are dedicated solely to drawing and sketching animals. So the next section could be humans. So the next five pages could be just strictly all about drawing and painting humans. And then the next section could be places and the next section could be objects and so on. You get the picture. Basically, you're creating ahead of time a sort of index for your sketchbook. Okay, so idea number two that I have for you guys is, just, is to just fill an entire sketchbook with anatomy studies. So I think that this is a really great idea, especially if you are sort of new at art or new at anatomy in general and you want to learn it. I think if you have a complete sketchbook that is just dedicated to anatomy and has nothing else going on in it, I think it's a great way to build your skill set. Idea number three is to fill an entire sketchbook up with house studies. So go on Google Maps Street View and look at houses or maybe like just take a walk around your neighborhood or a walk a few neighborhoods over or in just like a really nice neighborhood that you enjoy and just sketch houses that you see. Um, of course, you don't want to be creepy and like make, pe make people feel like you're kind of spying on them. So maybe kind of try to mostly just do it through Google Maps, Street View or whatever, but you know, if it's a neighborhood that you know, or you kind of know the people and they know you're an artist, like, I don't know, just kind of use your own discretion with this one. And obviously I'm not telling you to go on anyone's property. Don't go on anyone's property. But I thought that that was a really good one. Um, number four is to test art supplies and colors in the very back. So I know a lot of people are hung up on the first page thing. You know, they want the first page of their sketchbook to be really special and they don't want it to be messy. So if you're one of those people, then I would suggest you do the whole testing your art supplies and colors in the very back so that you don't have all of that color testing in the front. Because a lot of people, you know, they get a sketchbook and they test their colors in the front. But then later they regret it. But not everybody does. So it really depends on your personal views on a sketchbook. I personally don't really care about anything when it comes to trying to make my sketchbook perfect. I don't try to make my sketchbook perfect. But I know some people want it to be that way. So if you want the first impression, first page to be special, that's one way to avoid having more messy stuff at the front. But if you think of it this way, the first page is going to be probably the last on their mind by the end of the sketchbook if they're looking at your sketchbook. So think of it like that as well. They may not even remember what was at the beginning once they get toward the end. So I don't know, it really depends on your viewpoint. So the next one is to fill it with imaginary worlds, galaxies, and crazy characters who live there. So this by far is my favorite idea. You could do this just sprinkled throughout your normal sketchbook or you could create a whole sketchbook dedicated to this. In fact, creating worlds, creating characters, creating galaxies and like all of these different environments and characters with different behaviors and backgrounds. Honestly, this could take up multiple sketchbooks if you really go all in and go in depth with it. And I think that it is a really fun way to fill a sketchbook. It's, like I said, it's my favorite way, I am pretty sure. 
So number six is each season, put something that you found outside in your sketchbook, if it'll fit, of course. So like leaves, pressed flowers, twigs, like just anything you find that you think is interesting. As long as it's not going to be detrimental to your health, like make sure you don't put anything poisonous in there, obviously. But I think that it's another fun way to add something different, something with texture into your sketchbook. Um, I haven't done this a lot lately, but um, in the past I used to do this all the time. So, I don't know, I might do that again in the springtime, we'll see. Number seven, the last one, um, fill your sketchbook with examples of your work. Print it out as a reminder of your improvements. So, what I mean by this is, you know, you don't have to make a whole sketchbook like this, but you could. You could make a sketchbook into a portfolio and you could print all of your um, finalized pieces out and you could put them in your sketchbook. You know, let's say you did it in oil. You could print out a print of it, put it in your sketchbook and have that final piece. Or if you did a digital piece. Yeah, and another thing you could do is just sell your pages and actually make oil paintings straight in your sketchbook. So I think that's another great way to fill your sketchbook. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I sure loved filming all these clips for this. It was a lot of fun and I went back and I looked at old sketchbooks and stuff and it was a blast to see things that I did a long time ago. So that's why you've seen lots of different art styles going on because, I mean, I'm showing you art from all across different years of my life. So have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye! So before I go, I just want to shout out my patrons. They're on the screen right now. And I just want to thank them so much for supporting me. They're always so super kind and sweet and they help me out a lot. Thank you guys so much for being patrons.